Welcome to my review of the Sage Barista Express. This review is going to be in two parts. The first part is going to be me talking about the machine and all the good points that I like about it and all the bad points. And on the second video, I'm going to show you how I make a good cup of coffee using this machine. Now to start off with, um, I've had this machine for a year now. Um, I researched and looked into all the different sorts of coffee machines out there and if you've seen my previous videos you'll know that I really like my coffee and I've had various devices over the years to kind of assist with making coffee and it was time for me to kind of up my game and get something that was going to meet all the requirements that I wanted. Now my requirements for me personally was I wanted something that had the kind of decent espresso um, coffee uh, flavours and had the flexibility of being able to make really really good coffee but I also wanted something that wasn't too you know faffy I didn't want to spend loads of time making coffee and I'm a busy person so I want to get up in the morning have a really nice cup of coffee and then get on with my day. This machine seemed to fit the bill and from the Sage point of view um, or Breville if you're in the US um, this machine it kind of sits at the bottom of their range in regards to they've got the kind of the Oracle and they've got now the Barista dual boiler um, and so this machine was around about £400 which was purchased from Amazon. I looked at all the kind of different things that these machines offered and this specific one seemed to fit the bill for me and my needs. So what I really like about the machine is first of all I love the look. It looks fantastic, it's got this kind of slightly retro styling and the other machines above this don't have the little manual dial and I found this dial very very useful but the machine itself I love the look I love the fact that it's kind of got this stainless steel um, look to it it is incredibly well built so it's very very solid everything is solid all the dials are nice and chunky nothing feels like it's gonna break and it's not too overly complicated so if you're someone that doesn't want hundreds of buttons lots of different options um, this is a really good machine to go for um, as it's, it's fairly simple to use. So let's go through the kind of plus points of the machine. First of all, it is great at making espresso and it also has the option to make things like lattes and flat whites and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I make generally black coffee or espresso um, and I occasionally have the odd um, flat white. And um, one of the biggest kind of things that people kind of compare this to with the other machines is that it's a single boiler unit. Now by that, what that means is when you switch it on, um, you have to switch it on, wait for it to warm up, and then once it's warmed up, um, you can then obviously use your espresso shot, and then if you switch it into steam mode, you have to wait for the heat to heat the actual unit to, to warm up to, to be actually use the steam wand. Now for me, that isn't really a problem because this literally takes sort of 20 seconds for the steam to start coming out the nozzle. I don't need it to come out instantly. In that time, you've got time to go and you know, fill your milk jug up and get yourself prepped for, for actually getting the milk steam. So for me, it doesn't seem a really big problem. And the price hike in order to get a dual boiler unit is seems stupid um, if you're not in a hurry to make multiple cups of coffee. So I think if it's just for yourself or your family, um, I think this is a great unit. And for the money you're gonna save, um, this is the best kind of bang for your buck really. And so the thing that I think is really really good on this is that it's obviously got a grinder built into it so you don't have to have a separate grinder and in terms of worktop space it means that you're kind of consolidating down all the bits of kit that you need into one kind of compact unit and it nicely fits under my kind of uh, worktop area and I've got space in front of the coffee machine as well to do other things so it's not that this takes up a huge amount of space in my kitchen it sit, fits in nicely with everything else in my kitchen and I've actually managed to get rid of my manual grinder and various other bits and bobs uh, which is you know, this machine is now replaced. I also like the fact that the grinder is not the best grinder in the world but to be honest for this machine it seems to do a good job so um, when you are using the grind settings you can um, adjust the kind of granularity of the, of the grind you can adjust the quantity of the grind and it has this nice little unit at the bottom where you can just simply push the, the, the porta filter in and the grind will start to grind and you can stop it and press it again and the grind stops. So that's really nice, it's all contained in this one section of the unit. So when you purchase the machine, you'll get everything you need to make a good cup of coffee. Apart from the coffee beans, you'll get everything you need. Um, and they give you obviously all the baskets, the um, pressurized baskets, the non-pressurized baskets, cleaning brush, all that kind of good stuff. So it's very, very helpful in regards to giving you everything that you need to get you started. 
So the Express comes with a bunch of really nice accessories. So you've got some pressurized and non-pressurized baskets from single shot to double shot baskets. And they all simply just click into the porter filter, which I'll just show you in a second. And they also give you this tool, which they call the razor tool. I don't really use this, and it's designed to pop into the porter filter. And so when you do your dosing of your coffee, you can kind of spin this around and make sure that you've got the correct dosage of coffee in each um, filter. But as I said, you don't really need to use this once you've got used to the dosage that works right for you. And you get a brush tool, which is really useful for just cleaning coffee and grinds from around the actual machine itself. And you get this little device here, which is used to clean the actual milk uh, frothing device. So if you get any milk trapped into the into the actual tube, you can use this to kind of poke that out. And then you get this um, little rubber seal which is used for actually cleaning and I'll do another video on that on how you actually clean and descale this machine as well. Skits are very very easy to take in and out of the porter filter so you simply prise them out and then you can just swap them over with any other porter filter that you decide to use and just push it in. So they fit in nicely and this porter filter the actual spouts can be manoeuvred depending on the type of uh, cup or that you're using. You also get with the device a milk frothing jug uh, which is very nicely made and it has this temperature control on it so you can see the temperature rising as you froth the milk so you know when to take it off and um, I don't actually use this one I've got my own but this is the one that came with the machine. So get a tamper which is a metal bottom and it kind of has this plastic coating on the top but it's metal all the way through. It isn't very heavy and this is what a standard one looks like and it's much much heavier and you see it's much more kind of substantial but this is nice that they've given you this and it also it's very nice the fact that it's built into the machine um, but it does the job and you know you don't need to worry about buying an extra one this is more than sufficient for creating a really nice coffee so this machine is also very very easy to clean so when it comes to cleaning um, the tray is a little bit faffy in the sense that there's lots of little bits and grooves inside it which I don't think they necessarily needed to do but it is actually easy to clean so once you need to clean it down because it's all this kind of shiny stainless steel um, you can just I've got I use some stainless steel cleaner which I'll again I'll leave in the link below um, that I use to clean this down with and it usually does a really really good job of getting it all nice and shiny and clean again the way that it, it all comes apart so you can simply obviously pull the tray out um, and then you've got all your individual sections that this comes with okay and then obviously you've got all your tools in here as well that come out nice and easily so cleaning is very very easy on this machine um, the, the water system again has a filtration system so you've got a water filter in here so if you're in a hard water area or an area that hasn't got the greatest water the thought about obviously having a water filter in it and obviously this whole section at the back comes out so one of the other things I really like about this machine is that this particular model has the kind of pressure gauge on there now some of the other machines that are more expensive than this don't have that option and I found that very useful, especially when you're new to making an espresso, being able to kind of dial into your kind of espresso shots. So obviously if the dial is too low, you know that you know your grind might be too loose, that you might need to have a finer grind. It could be that you've not tamped hard enough. It, you know, various other reasons as well that we'll go through when we're actually making the coffee itself. But I found this pressure gauge very, very useful. I also love the look at it as well. Um, but it is helpful if you're new to making an espresso having this gauge to give you an idea about what's actually happening with the coffee. Because I think one of the, the kind of ways of learning how to make espresso is obviously learning by your mistakes. And if you didn't have this gauge, you wouldn't really know what you're doing, you're kind of guessing. So I found it very, very helpful for myself in terms of learning how to pull fairly decent shots. And um, I think it's a shame they've got rid of that on some of the other machines. But you know, it's it's kind of each to their own. It's, it's what you prefer to what you prefer to have, have the manual method or the kind of more digital methods that the other models have. One of the downsides of the machine is that if you want to refill the uh, water filter at the back, um, you do have to pull the entire machine out from your workspace. So if you've got this against a counter workspace, like most people will, um, there's no place to to fill the water up from the front. So you have to kind of pull the unit out or lift and pull it out 
and then take the filter out from the back and fill it up from the tap. Now, that is a bit of a pain because this machine, unlike some of the other bigger brother models, doesn't have a system where it allows you to kind of lift the machine upon this like wheel mechanism they have and easily pull it out. And that's a shame it doesn't have that because obviously this has got some friction against it because it's got rubber stoppers at the bottom to stop it from moving. So you either have to lift it and pull it out or you just have to drag it out onto the counter. Now, if you've got bad back or you're not very strong, um, you may find that a little bit tricky. So it's a small thing, but because you are filling up this reservoir fairly often, especially if you drink a lot of coffee, um, you may find that to be a little bit of a pain. The porter filter is slightly smaller on this machine than it is on some of the bigger machines that Sage do. And so this is a 54 millimeter porter filter. Now that's not a huge problem if you're just using the accessories that came with this. But if you want to buy anything that is an additional thing that you might find useful for making better coffee, for example, you might want a, a full size um, tamper, um, that would be, uh, have to buy a slightly smaller uh, tamper and search for a 53 millimeter tamper to be able to fit this actual porter filter. The other thing that is a little bit of a pain is that when you're using the grinder, um, the grinder obviously has this kind of rough surface here, which is, you know, simply a grid. So you can see on here, there's lots of holes. And what that means is that sometimes when you're grinding, that the grind overflows from the actual porter filter when it's filling it up, and it can go down here and kind of mess up your coffee machine, which means you have to kind of wash it more regularly. It would have been nice if this surface was completely flat on this area, because this is an area that has any water coming through. The water is all on this side, so it would have been nice to have that flat so that it's easy to wipe when you're grinding and any grinds that fall, you don't have to kind of wash the entire thing. It's a small thing, but it does make a difference when you're making coffee on a regular basis. Other than that, I have got no complaints with this machine. It has worked fantastic from day one. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to because you need to dial in your espresso when you're kind of making your coffee shots, but that's something you'll have with any machine to be honest. Um, getting used to how everything works and how is the best way for you to make your coffee um, it, it takes a little bit of time. So as long as you've got a little bit of time, and I find it quite fun, I think it's quite a nice process making really good coffee, and once you do get it down and you can you know, really enjoy your shots, this becomes a kind of a joyful thing to do on a daily basis. And I love it, waking up in the morning, coming down and using this machine and getting some really good coffee because it makes very, very good coffee. Now I'm no coffee connoisseur and you know, I'm not an expert, but when I show you my next video, I'll show you what I do to get the best out of the machine. And I learned you know, from various different methods of trying and trial and error, different coffee beans, and I found what works well for me. So overall guys, I absolutely love this machine. I love the way it looks. I love the coffee that I get from the machine on a daily basis. Um, I've used this machine pretty much every day. I haven't had any problems with it. And um, I think they've done a very, very good job in making something that's available to the public that gives you the feeling that you're making something of high quality, you're making decent shots, and actually you don't need to spend you know, thousands on buying these really, really expensive machines. Um, this is a really good starting point. And I think this machine is gonna last me for at least the next four or five years, and I might then look at something else to kind of up my game. But for the time being, I can't think of any reasons why I would wanna change from this yet. Uh, and it serves my purpose for the level I'm at with making espresso. It makes really good coffee. The coffee always tastes really good. As long as you're using really fresh coffee and kind of following the process right, um, you'll always get some decent shots. So if you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. Watch my next video to subscribe and, and put the bell notification on as I will be uploading a video that will go through step by step in making a very, very good um, espresso shot from this machine. And uh, I'm not into latte art or anything like that, but uh, I'll do my best to show you guys how, what I do. And I learned you know, the hard way really. I spent quite a lot on coffee and you, know, you tend to go through a lot of coffee when you're trying to learn how to use this. So it's nice to have a few handy tips uh, on things that I learn that will help you save a bit of money as well. As I said, I'll leave a link to this machine below. Um, please watch out for my next video and I shall catch you soon.